Hello everyone and this is lesson 3 in the material X series and we're going to take a look at UV modification. Okay, so what I have are I have like two textures. I have a checker map, okay, which I painted in Photoshop because material X doesn't have a checker map and then I also have like a wood map. Okay, I'll attach both of these uh, with the lesson so you can download them. So this one I built in substance uh, sampler. Okay, so there's like a wood uh, filter in there so I just built it with that okay and what we're going to do is we're going to take both of them and we're going to build a shader like this okay so basically I'm going to take the checker map and modify the base UVs so I can you know control the rotation and you know roughness and everything of the wood map based on you know different uh, values in the checker map okay so that's primarily what we're going to do okay so to get started i'll uh, work in this file only okay so that you know i don't have to redo the setup the setup is fairly simple i have an object i have the material library and assigned material i have a dome light and karma like that's it there's nothing fancy in here within the object i have a sphere and a grid okay so we'll start off with the grid and then uh, you know we'll take a look at the sphere later okay so what i'll do is i'll come into the material library this is the you know this is the setup but we'll make a new one so i'll just take a standard surface and let's call it wood flooring and i'll come into assign material and i'll pick up wood flooring so let's just render this and see if we're getting everything. Yeah, okay, this is good. Okay, so my uh, object already has UV maps. Okay, so I took like a standard UV project and gave it UVs. It's the same thing for, the, for both, like the sphere also has UV maps. Okay, so let's just jump in here. And to get started, what I'll do is I'm gonna take a USD texture, a USD UV texture and a USD transform 2D and I'll come into the material X go to geometric and you'll find material X texture coordinate so take you know these three which will connect okay let's keep this to a vector 2 and this comes in here and in here I'll just pick up the let me just see if I can pick up the wood yeah okay so I'll pick up wood base color I'll just connect this to the base color. Okay. So switch on karma and if you've done everything right, we should be able to see it. So there you go. Okay. So we have our, it'll take some time to cache the texture. Okay. Just uh, like FYI, uh, someone asked me if karma XP supports uh, light path expressions, LPs, and I read the documentation and yes, it does support light path expressions. I don't know how to do it because I don't do a lot of compositing, but it supports LP, like that being the basic point. So the next thing we want is I'm going to duplicate this. Let's just name these things. Okay. So we'll call this as base color and I'm going to take all of this and control C control V. Let's call this as checker. And I'll pick up the checker map, which is here. So if I just take a look at this, that's pretty much what it is. Like there's nothing fancy in here. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to tile it a bit. So I'll make it around 0.5 by 0.5. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is, uh, I want the wood map, but I want to create like a floor tile pattern, uh, which is like 45 degrees. So each ma uh, sort of each tile is like a plus 45 minus 45, you know, like that. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to take this checker map and we're going to control the rotation coming into base color. Okay, so I'll just take a remap node. So you'll get something called material X remap. Uh, plug any one of these because it's black and white. So plug the R into in and we'll take this and put it into rotation. And let's call this as rotation remap. And this will, uh, what we'll do is like, you can do something fairly simple. Like if I make the out to 90, you'll get this. Okay. So pretty straightforward, like nothing 
particularly fancy going on in here. So if I take this, make it say minus 45 and plus 45, we will get this. Okay, now along with this, what I also want to do is I want to control the hue saturation and value for you know each alternate tile. Okay, so you will get something called as if you type in HSV, so you'll get something called as material X HSV adjust. Okay, so just take this and I'll plug this in here. This comes out. And so this is the hue. Okay, now the hue value goes between zero and one. And then you have the saturation and you have the value. Okay, so if I just make this say 0 0.2, you'll see it changes color. So one and zero is the same, same value, like it has to be between that. Okay, so this is hue, this is saturation. So if let's say if I make this zero, you know, you get saturation and we have value. So, you know, I can make it brighter. Okay, so what I want to do is the problem is this is not broken up. It just has one thing called amount. Okay, so we need to do like a float to vector. Okay, so for that, if you come to material X, you'll find um, in channel, you'll get something called combine three. Okay, so we'll take a combine three. So this one is, so now you're taking like these three and bringing it here. So this is HSV, okay. So let's keep this to one and one, which is the way it is. And let's bring this up and we'll pick up another remap. Everything is going to be done through remaps. Okay, so let's call this as uh, U remap. And again, just plug this in here. And let's say I also want to control the value. Okay, no, no, don't want to control the saturation. So let's call this as value remap. And this comes in here. And that goes out there. Now you won't see anything happen because it's like it's going from zero to one. So it's the same thing. So uh, this is happening because the checker map is basically a bitmap. And where the black and white meets, there is like a one pixel sort of separation there because of the anti-aliasing. So that is why you're getting this problem. Okay, so if you create a checker map with no anti-aliasing at all, I, I'm sure you won't get that problem. Okay, so uh, let's make it 0 0.02 and you'll get this. Okay, now let's also control the value a bit. So let's plug that into three. And we'll start at 0 0.9 and make this around 1.2. See, so we can sort of, you know, control these things. Okay, so this is good. Okay, like this is, this works perfectly fine. Now, uh, the next thing we want to control is the roughness. Okay, so if I come in here, let me just get the specular roughness down. There you go, like that's my reflection. So we want like, let's say the darker ones should be more rough and then the lighter one should be less. So what I can do is, uh, there is a roughness map. Okay, so I can just take like all of this. There are two options that you have. Like if you don't have a roughness map, like let's say if you just have the a color map, I can desaturate this and use this as a roughness map. Okay, so what I can do is I can just take an HSV here. So we'll just take a material X HSV and plug that in here and take the saturation to zero. So what this should do is it should give me a, you know, a black and white map which we can use as roughness. So I can just call it roughness. And what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this through a contrast. So we'll take a material X contrast and let's just take a material X and let's come into channel. Yeah, and let's do separate vector. Okay, so let's take a separate vector and plug this in and the X goes out there. Okay, so this is like a vector to float. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's say what we want is, again, like just to control the roughness of it, I want the darker tiles to be rougher and the lighter tiles to be, you know, less rough. So I'm going to take the pivot, make it around 0 0.01 and increase the contrast value. Okay, I think, don't make it 0 0.01. Yeah, I think this is nice. 
So if I keep it really low, you know, like this will become very rough and then this will be like, you know, it will give me like more contrast. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take another, uh, you know, remap. So control C, control V. Let's just drop this in and this will go into amount. So let's call this as contrast remap. And this plugs into amount. And let's make it like low and let's get this high. Yeah, there you go. That looks interesting. And I could try to adjust this. Okay, this should give me an interesting result, if nothing else. So this is an option, right? Like otherwise you can just take a brand new, like the roughness map, which we have, we can, we can use that. So I'll do, a, I'll do one with that as well. But just to show you what we'll get, I'll get the color back and let's take this and plug it into specular roughness. And there you go. You should get something a little interesting. Yeah, give it a few seconds to cache it. There you go. Okay. So we can kind of adjust this whole thing based on, you know, how the pivot should work. There you go. See. So, you know, as an option, you can use this, but let's do one thing. Let's take the, let's take the roughness map that we have. Okay. So I'm going to take, I'll just go back to Houdini GL for a second. I'll do control C control V and all of this will remain like the checker map will have to keep controlling it. Uh, let's call this roughness and we'll pick up the roughness and I'll get rid of this because we don't need it. And this will come in here. Now we'll just have to visualize it again because you know, that was functioning differently. So let's just disconnect this. Let's bring this back to base color. Okay. So let's get the pivot down to 0 0.01. Yeah, there we go. See, this is better. Yeah. So there you go. So this is a little bit better. Okay. So we can now just, you know, take these contrast values and, you know, work on them. Yeah. So this, so the darker tiles are currently shiny and the lighter tiles will be, you know, so we can reverse it if we want, like, let's keep it this way. Okay. And let's just plug this, plug the color back in and this comes into roughness. Yeah. Give it a few seconds, but there you go. See, so now it is like, if I take this and start to adjust this, see, there, there you go. Let's increase the IOR so we can see it a bit better. Yeah, there we go. I think that's better. So see, this is like everything is sharp and then we can just increase that. Let's make it like 20. So you'll get like a pretty extreme value. See, there you go. Like if you want to visualize it slightly better, we can switch over to a sphere. I think that will be, you know, that will show up a little bit better. Yeah, see, so if you look at that, you know, the reflection. Okay, and then lastly, I can just take, do the same thing for a normal map. We're not going to modify too much with the normal map. So I'll just take, you know, this thing and do control C, control V. And the only thing is I'll call this normal. And we'll just pick up the normal map. And then type in normal and you'll get something called as material X uh, normal map. Okay. So this plugs in here. So the RGB goes into the in and this comes into normal. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So let's make this around six. So we'll get like a fair bit of, yeah, there you go. Like if I take this dome light and rotate it. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is not a very complicated lesson, but you get an idea of, you know, the system is flexible enough. Like you can do a fair bit of interesting things with it if you want to.
like so now that this map is fully made you know if we want to make it like you know 0 and 90 you know you can make those kind of changes or if you just want to you know completely change the color of it you can do these kinds of things so you know that option is also completely available all right so this is pretty much it right so if you the system looks relatively sort of rudimentary in some ways but uh, there are enough tools to build you know more complex things if you want to uh, the one thing that's missing is uh, like there are no inbuilt patterns and textures you know which is the one thing that i really miss but beyond that uh, like if you take you know textures from photoshop or substance or whatever you have enough things in there to sort of modify them okay so the next lesson we'll take a look at uh, the basic noise maps that are available in Material X and what you can do with them. Okay, that's pretty much it.